gentlemen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this uh, uh, regular meeting of the Los Angeles City Board of Public Works for Friday, April 9th, 2021. Hope everyone is well. Happy Friday. I think it's opening day at Dodger Stadium. Lots to be excited about. Um, and uh, good morning, Dr. Campos. Uh, good morning, President Good. Fernando Campos, Executive Officer, establishing roll call and quorum for today. We have President Good, Vice President Garcia, President Pro Tem David, and Commissioner Caloza. President Good, you do have a quorum at this time. Currently, we do not have any callers on the line under general public comment. We do have three callers on the line for item number one, and we also have the applicant on item number two, should your board have any questions for the applicant on item number two. Okay. And no, um, com no commentary on the neighborhood council comment section. Okay, and you said no general public comment. That is correct. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and uh, let's see here. Okay, and Mr. Jordan is here, right? Yes, I see. Yes. <coughs> general counsel, Mr. Jordan, is on the line. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Jordan. All right, let's uh, then quickly we'll, we'll uh, handle the minutes first from last week. Um, <clears> or <throat> two sets. All right. <clears throat> uh, let's start uh, by um, entertaining those. Um, do I have a motion? Or I, I will uh, motion to accept and approve the minutes from Wednesday, uh, March 24th, 2021. So second. Second. Thank you, President Pro Tem Davis. Um, any concerns or objections, Vice President Garcia or Commissioner Colosa? All right, hearing none, um, the minutes from Wednesday, March 24th uh, are approved and adopted forthwith. Um, uh, and then um, the Thursday, March 25th, 2021, Dr. Campos, that, that was a special agenda, wasn't it? That was, yes. Yeah, okay. Um, I will motion to approve the minutes from the special agenda on Thursday, March 25th, 2021. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Any concerns or objections, President Pro Tem Davis or Vice President Garcia? No objections from me. All right. Hearing no objections, the minutes from that special agenda on Thursday, March 25, um, are adopted and approved forthwith. Um, with that, let's jump into item number one for today. Um, what I'd like to do is um, ask Miss, uh, I will read the item into the record, Dr. Compost, and I'm going to ask, I believe it's Miss Lau is going to be giving the presentation. Um, and I know we have, I think you said three callers on the, on the item. We'll take those uh, comments on the item and then uh, we will, uh, uh, we'll talk through it. Um, so item number one, folks, is uh, the Bureau of Engineering. This is a project in CD1. It's a budget increase and supplemental agreement to change order number 36, United Engineering and Construction, Inc., North Spring Street Viaduct Widening and Rehabilitation Project Phase 2, recommending the board, one, authorize $375,000 in additional contingency and approve a revised construction budget of $3,082,470 for the North Spring Street Viaduct Widening and Rehabilitation Project Phase 2. Two, authorize the city engineer to issue supplemental agreement change order number 36 to United Engineering and Construction, Inc., UECI, for a not to exceed amount of $200,000 for the project to brace the existing West shared property wall in place, which is included in the additional contingency requested in recommendation number one above. Three, Authorize two members of the board to sign the supplemental change, uh, supplemental agreement, change order number 36. Um, and four, authorize the city engineer to issue subsequent change orders under the contract up to the revised construction budget of $3,082,470 for the project. Um, okay, and I guess, well, let's, let's go ahead. Um, uh, Ms. Lau, good morning. Good morning. Shirley Lau with the Bureau of Engineering, Bridge Improvement Division. Uh, the report before you is relative to phase two of the North Spring Street Viaduct Widening and Rehabilitation Project. For reference, um, the work to widen and ref uh, retrofit the viaduct itself 
It was phase one of the project and completed a little over a year ago. Phase two addresses geometric and design deficiencies in the roadway and improves multimodal circulation uh, with a primary focus on access to the Los Angeles State Historic Park. Uh, the work includes a demolition of 1701 North Spring Street to create a four-way intersection at Wilhart and North Spring Street and the extension north to Baker Street. Uh, 1701 North Spring Street it has since been demolished. Uh, it shared a wall with the adjacent structure to the west at 1637 North Spring Street. A BOE had shared details of our demolition with the property owner during the design process and the owner at the time did not express any concerns. Um, however, after the construction went underway, the owner did express concerns that the demolition negatively affected the structural integrity of their building. Subsequently, the owner procured an engineer who confirmed that there was some strength lost to the structure and requested that the city replace the support that was lost. Uh, prior to agreeing to the additional support work, BOE had consulted the city attorney's office who has confirmed the validity of the owner's claim. Uh, therefore, as part of this report, Supplemental Agreement Change Order number 36 is recommended with a not to exceed amount of $200,000 for the uh, necessary support work. Um, the additional work also represents an impact to the project's original schedule uh, and the contractor is owed compensation for extended overhead costs during this time. Uh, BOE is also currently reviewing the time impact analysis that was submitted to us. Uh, in addition, CD1 requested uh, for BOE and DOT to look at the revised striping across the bridge to provide additional safety measures to cyclists. <coughs> Therefore, uh, BOE is requesting additional contingency for a total amount of 375,000. And that includes the previously mentioned 200,000 in the supplemental agreement change order number 36. Uh, there is no impact to the general fund for this contingency. A uh, portion is front funded from engineering special services fund and will be reimbursed by the project's federal grant Remaining portion is from a refund from the um, Southern California Regional Rail Authority. It was for funds that the city had previously paid them uh, for supporting services and they just refunded it. And uh, we have a council, adopt a council motion that we allocated the money to this project. Uh, BOE across the board approve the recommendations set forth in this report. And uh, that concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Shirley, or uh, Ms. Lau. Um, appreciate that. Um, Dr. Campos, I think we have several callers on the item, right? Uh, that is correct, Mr. President. We have three callers on the line. Would you like to take those comments at this time? Thank you. We'll go ahead and get started with the first caller on the line, caller ending in 415, Mr. Sider. If you can please press star six at this time, you'll be given two minutes to speak on item number one. Good morning, everybody. This is Michael Schneider from Streets for All. I wanted to comment on the proposed bike lanes for the Spring Street Bridge and all the way through to the park. Um, part of the EIR, of course, included these bike lanes. They were actually included in phase one, which was completed over a year ago. I don't understand why these bike lanes have not been striped already, given that. Uh, we've also seen emails that the contractor was ready last October this is an email from the Department of Public Works saying our contractor is ready to go next week to stripe the bike lanes, but they weren't striped. We want to make sure that these lanes are striped as soon as possible, that they're protected. It's great that CD1 says they're so concerned about safety and they want to use bollards. What about using concrete or something more sturdy so a car couldn't take off a cyclist on that bridge? Lastly, I just want to say um, the project was also downgraded from people, from a point of view of people on bikes on Wilhard Street. It was extended to Baker, but instead of bike lanes as promised in the project plan, sharrows were striped. Sharrows are completely meaningless from a safety point of view. They are just paint that don't even give the cyclists their own dedicated space. I would encourage you and ask that you follow the project plan and strike proper class two or class four, if you want to add more protection, bike lanes on that small extension to Baker to get people safely into the park. Shows is not 
an uh, acceptable substitution. They don't provide the same protection as a lane. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schneider. Uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the next caller, caller ending in 639, caller ending in 639. I believe it's Mr. Hunter. If you can please press star six at this time to unmute your microphone, you'll be given two minutes to speak on item number one. Hey, this is Hunter Owens. I want to thank the Board of Public Works for having us today. Um, you'll see uh, entered into the record via written comment and email from uh, Sunjana uh, Sapikar uh, Esquire uh, from CBC Earthlaw concerning the fact of the matter that this project has been unduly delayed um, for implementing the phase one pedestrian and bike improvements, including what has been mentioned on Wildhart Street and Spring Street. I want to once again uh, reiterate my support for getting this done and let's get this done fast. This is an unsafe situation um, and is a violation of the project's uh, CEPA agreement. Um, I want to stress how in written communication from the Bureau of Engineering, which has been obtained, please see the letter, that this was ready to go in October and yet has still been unduly delayed, compromising safety and health of the residents in the area, including myself. Uh, thank you for taking this comment and I urge you to support this modification and order the full implementation of the project plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Owens. We'll go ahead and move on to the last caller, caller ending in 605, caller ending, ending in 605. If you can please press star six at this time to unmute your microphone. You'll be given two minutes to speak on item number one. Hi, uh, thanks. Um, yeah, my comments are I'm happy to see this additional contingency included. Um, I uh, similarly, as the other callers, urge that this striping work be done forthwith. Um, it was originally we were supposed to have striped lanes in 2018 as part of phase one. And, um, you know, I'm sorry to say it, but there's just not a lot of trust with our civil agencies because of um, we've had issues in the past of projects being diluted or not delivering um, fully what they were supposed to. And we are worried about that happening again. So I hope you'll understand. And I hope that BSS will, and BOE will work forthwith to install these um, bike lanes as they're supposed to be, um, as they're outlined in the EIR. And as far as Wild Heart Street is concerned, um, I, I would agree that the transition into the park has not been um, considered for active transportation users. Um, it's really a deficiency in the overall project scoping that is a shame. Um, because there's a way to turn this into a grand entrance into the park um, that was missed. And instead, Walhart Street has overly generous um, vehicular-oriented uh, curb radiuses and otherwise is not geared in any way to give people walking and biking to the park a safe and enjoyable um, entrance into it. Um, don't necessarily even see plans for control um, at the intersection with Baker, maybe they're in the works, but I would advise one um, and just generally want the city to do what it can to create a active transportation first um, entrance here at the park, which is kind of the whole point um, of this little stub uh, of Wild Heart. So, um, yeah, thank you. That's it. Mr. President, that concludes the public comments on item number one. Thank you. Thank you, uh, folks, for uh, joining us today and, and uh, providing uh, providing that input. We really appreciate it. Um, colleagues, let's open this up. Uh, uh, Vice President Garcia, you want to start us off? <clears throat> I, I do. I just, um, I have a quick question, and I, I was briefed by Shirley. So thank you, Shirley, for your report and uh, all the callers that are here. Good morning, everyone. Um, and I know we talked about this project as a whole, but I guess one of the callers today had a question about the bike lanes. Can you can you explain what's going on with the bike bike lanes at this time? Um, yes. Yeah, so the uh, we had the phase one of the which retrofitted and widened the bridge um, that was completed. However, this phase two work required demolition of a building. 
And so that required um, us to re-stripe and reduce the lane on the viaduct itself during the entire phase two of the project. So there were limitations on what we could stripe on the viaduct until phase two was completed. Um, also, often we didn't want to stripe in things that would, you know, be damaged by construction. And so um, it was always the intent that once we're done with phase two, that the entire project can be striped to what it was intended to. Okay, that, that sounds fair. It sounds like then it's a timing situation because there's more, more work to be done. Got it. Correct. Okay, that explains to me. I, I don't have any other questions at this time, President. Um, and I'll, I'll, you know, follow my uh, colleagues at this time. Thank you. Thanks, Vice President Garcia. Uh, President Pro Tem Davis. Um, Ms. Lau, I wanted to ask again, you said that uh, we had some difficulty bringing this motion forward before now. It appears that, the reason why I'm asking the question, one of the constituents mentioned how long it took us to, to move this project forward. What were the reasons for that again? Um, so generally the project, um, we, the, when we demoed the, the building, um, unfortunately, you know, the building was over a hundred years old. So the walls were over a hundred years old. So these were um, the bracing. We also did bracing on the East shared wall. So these were kind of unanticipated things that happened um, as we were in construction. Um, so unfortunately, that did delay the project. Mm -hmm. And these were just unanticipated uh, conditions. Uh, we also had uh, underground storage tanks that were contaminated. This was underneath the, the, the building that has been demoed. And so that required a lot of contamination removal. So um, these were some of the delays that we experienced. Okay, um, and so the timeline of the project being proposed is what? What's the timeline here? So we just wanted to, after um, today's board, um, uh, should the board choose to approve the report before you, uh, then we will wrap up the wall work for the West Shared Wall. And then um, we will just look forward to striping the project. I mean, everything else is, the street has already been constructed. So we have some cleanup work and other minor things to, to do on the civil side. But we do need to complete the wall work and also um, uh, just wrap up any other items that are, uh, that BCA has seen that we, we need to, the contracting needs to wrap up to be conforming to the contract plans. Yeah, so I see no reason why uh, this project does not deserve support. Obviously, the constituents who would utilize uh, this uh, improvement certainly are anxious and uh, highly anticipating our implementing this project. And so having said that and understanding all of the construction barriers that you had to overcome uh, in your side of the table, uh, certainly I would support this uh, project moving forward. So thank you for your report. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you, Mr. Davis. Yeah, um, Commissioner Closer. Uh, thank you, President Good. Um, thank you for your report, Ms. Lau, and thank you to um, uh, all the stakeholders who dialed in this morning to, to give your support of, of this project and, and share um, some concerns that you, you also have in terms of the timing of this all. Um, from, from what you shared with us, Ms. Lau, sounds like there are some unforeseen unfortunately that that delayed some of the work that that might have been intended to happen earlier is that was that what I heard uh, yes that is correct with the demolition of such an old building we really um, did not anticipate a lot of this additional work so yes that's correct commissioner and um, typically for for some of our um, active transportation projects the striping is typically the the last um, one of the last tasks happen. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Typically on all of um, my bridge projects, we, we try to do that last just because there's a lot of, you know, ingress and egress of construction um, equipment, and we didn't want that to damage um, the, the new striping or the roadway. Okay. Yeah, I, I, 
um, I know that sometimes we, it doesn't, the striping doesn't always happen as, as quickly as we like, and it sounds like this is um, happening imminently, so that's, that's really good to hear. And um, in terms of the safety issues, too, that were, were kind of brought up, um, what was here previously, there, there was no bike lane previously, um, and there was no uh, plastic bollards at all, right? Uh, that's correct. Okay, so these are these additional enhancements. Um, were we did we work with DOT to, to add these in in terms of helping improve um, safety of of um, bicyclists? Uh, yes, we are. Con we continue to work with DOT on finalizing uh, the bollards, which are um, the additional uh, scope. Correct. Okay. And that's um, that's consistent too with kind of what along with what we have on on Main Street with helping improve safety for for people on bikes. I think great. Uh, yes, we. Uh, I think LADOT they have. I I've seen that also that they have um, been installing more of these as a measure, a safety measure. Okay. Yeah, that's what I just wanted to clarify that because I know um, some, some, I see since we are here at City Hall that a lot of people use that pack the, the new bike lanes installed with plastic bollards as well. And uh, I know this is an access point that that's referenced here to in CD1 uh, specifically for for the park. And so, you know, it seems consistent in terms of creating that that pathway. Um, and so just wanted to establish that, that that's that seems consistent with what we've done in other um, nearby parts of, of the city. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner. Um, I don't think I have any more questions on this. I know um, this was a, a, a challenging project. There's a, a, it's a complicated intersection with a, many different safety issues, and I'm sorry if you hear <laughs> a lot of background noise. Um, uh, but I don't have any further questions. Um, thanks for your work on this, and um, I appreciate these enhancements to, to this intersection. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Colosa. Um, Ms. Lau, my, my only question uh, uh, is, um, well, we're, two things. So, so part of, part of the um, additional 375,000, is potentially to help pay for the trip, the, the, the bike lane enhancements, or is that's just contingency in the event we discover other stuff that's already part of the project? Um, your the additional contingency, so hmm. 200, so total will be 375, 200,000 is for the wall, and the additional 175 contingency, um, partial, uh, portion of that would be for the uh, delay cost to oh, the right. contractor, yeah. and then the, the rest would be for any upgrades to the um, bike facilities that's right. that we've been right. speaking about. Yeah. Okay, and that's something we're currently working with uh, the stakeholders and then also Council District 1 on? Yes, and DOT and BOE are working collectively on that, correct? Got it, okay. Um, and, I mean, to be clear for everyone, um, for the record, um, what we're hearing today is the approval of the change order to, to provide that, those funds. Um, uh, there are other policy matters around this, but um, that's the item before us. Um, and so uh, I think it's important to, to make that distinction. Um, there are other pieces to this that we are not voting on today. This is to, um, uh, this is to uh, uh, approve the change order that will allow you to take care of those buildings, um, which is requisite to getting this done, um, and to provide um, uh, uh, the, the the basically the wiggle room to handle um, the contractor's additional costs and and any additional costs that come from those other policy decisions that we're not hearing today. Um, all right, um, so sure, uh, just for clarification, uh, as the Bureau, uh, City Engineer, as is typical in all of its construction projects, you know, has the authority to issue change orders you know, up to maybe certain limits. So it may very well be, as these additional details are fleshed out, that they're not going to come back to the board because the City Engineer has authority you know, to do change orders. So that's actually one of the elements for you is authorizing the City Engineer to issue subsequent change orders under the contract in order to draw upon that revised construction budget. 
Right. And, th and th there's nothing atypical about that. That is essentially the case on every construction. Thank you for that additional point, Ted. That's a really good point. Um, <clears throat> okay, great. So do I have a motion to move the item forward? So move. Thank you, President Pro Tem Davis. Do I have a second? Second. I'll take the second from Commissioner Colosa. Any concerns, Vice President Garcia? All right, um, hearing no concerns, uh, we will adopt the item as adopted and approved forthwith. Thank you, Ms. Lau. Thank you, uh, 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 members of the public for joining us. I um, look forward to this thing wrapping up. So go forth. Thanks, Shirley. Thank you. Have a great weekend. You too. All right, colleagues, that brings us to item number two. Item number two is um, a tree removal request um at 1000 south hill street uh this is in cd 14 downtown recommending the board one find under the california public resources code section 21166 and the state's environmental quality act guidelines section 15162 on the basis of substantial evidence contained in the whole record that since the city's prior certification of the mitigated negative declaration um mmd uh number ENV-2016-4710-2 MND. There have been no changes to the project, changes with respect to the circumstances under which the project is being undertaken, or new information of substantial importance concerning the project, which can cause new significant environmental effects or a substantial increase in the severity of previously identified significant effects, and therefore no subsequent MND, supplemental MND, or other analysis is required for the project. Two, specify uh, that the Bureau of Street Services Urban Forestry Division, located at 1149 South Broadway, is custodian of the documents or other material that constitute the record of proceedings upon which the board's decision is based. And three, review and approve the request for a fee permit for the removal of three trees, which include two Southern Magnolia, um, and one Canary Island pine tree. Tree replacements are required. Um, this item was continued from its original agendized uh, board meeting, which was on Friday, March 26, 2011. Um, I see uh, uh, the indomitable um, Hector Benuelos uh, is with us this morning. Good morning, Hector. Good morning, President Good. Why don't you <clears throat> tell us all about this? <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, yes. Good morning, President Good, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Hector Banuelos. I'm with Streets LA Urban Forestry Division. Uh, we have before us is a request for a fee permit for three street trees at 1000 South Hill Street in Council District 14. Uh, the, uh, the applicant, Ani Capital LLC, is proposing construction of a 60 story mixed use building with 700 uh, residential dwelling units as part of vesting tentative track 74760. Dash 1A. Uh, within the contents of the, uh, the letter of determination as a condition to build, the applicant is required to widen Olympic Boulevard uh, from a 30 feet half roadway to 36 feet half roadway. Uh, I, I want to mention that this location is on the southeast corner of Olympic uh, Boulevard and Hill Street. Uh, before I go on, so the um, <clears throat> at the site it was inspected and they determined that there are. Uh, five trees growing on South Hill Street uh, in front of the uh, site, and there are two Southern Magnolia trees growing, growing on the West Olympic Boulevard uh, street side. The trees are in poor to good condition, measuring approximately eight to, uh, excuse me, 10 to 18 inches in diameter by 15 feet to 30 feet in height. Uh, the, there are two, these two Southern Magnolias uh, located on Olympic Boulevard will be impacted by the required street widening and there is one Canary Island pine tree that is growing within the footprint of uh, the proposed driveway for this, uh, for this project. Uh, I guess if the developer had to pick a tree as to what tree to remove, that was probably the right tree to pick. That, that pine tree has deformed branching structure uh, and it appears that there was a, uh, the, it lost its central leader. It failed uh, several years ago and the tree has been kind of growing kind of awkwardly ever since. So uh, those three trees are only trees identified for removal. There are four other canary island pine trees growing along Hill Street that are going to be retained in place. And uh, the developer of ours is going to protect them in place. And so if approved, 
the applicant will plant a minimum of two 36 inch box size London plane trees along Olympic Boulevard and a minimum of four 36 inch box size uh, Canary Island pine trees on Hill Street. The uh, Community Forestry Advisory Committee, the Council District 14, and the uh, Department of Neighborhood Empowerment were informed of the proposed tree removals. And uh, the division has not heard any objections as of, as, as of yet on this item. So that concludes my presentation and I'm here to address any questions the board and or the public may have. Thank you, Mr. Benuelos. Um, uh, is there anyone, uh, I know we have the applicant, but I don't know that we necessarily need to ask any questions of the applicant yet. Um, do we have any public comment, general public or, or I, a comment on the item, Dr. Campos? Uh, no, we do not. Okay. Only the right. applicant on the line. Okay. Um, uh, Vice President Garcia, any questions or concerns for Mr. Benuelos or uh, the or Mr. Specter, the applicant? Uh, yeah, good morning, uh, Mr. Buñuelos. Hector, I saw the palm tree that's going to be cut. What are the other two trees that are going to be cut? Are the ones inside that, like that fence that's showing right now, or are those the ones outside? You're on mute. You're on mute, Hector. Sorry about right. that. <laughs> Making, just testing to see if everybody's awake. Sorry. <laughs> I, I am totally awake. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm unaware of the fencing um, at this property here, but there are two main. Uh, as far as I know, those are the only trees that exist on this property are the ones on the street. And so, yes, yeah, so there are two magnolia trees on Olympic Boulevard. Yeah, one isn't doing very well. It's uh, rather not in good condition. The other one is in fair condition. And those will be uh, impacted by the required street widening and need to be removed. Okay, okay. And those big pretty trees, um, and I'm sorry I don't know the official name of them. I will I will one day know all my trees. But those beautiful trees that are lined up, there's like three of them, those will stay, right? Those are the ones that he's going to preserve? Yeah, They're so on, on Hill. On Hill Street. Yes, yes. on Hill Street. Yeah. Okay, those yeah, are so those. I those are gonna be, okay, I, they're going to be preserved, right? That's the official uh, well, request. Well, one... Yeah, one will be removed because it's in the footprint. That's the one that's growing kind of awkward. I don't know if you know uh, the site there, but there's one growing adjacent to the Maya on the southern on the southern portion of the site. That's the one that is identified for removal of the driveway. And that one has poor branching structure. It probably needs to be removed or eventually probably fail if it's grown to a substantial size mm -hmm. or let to grow to a substantial size. So that one will be removed. The rest of the remaining pine trees will remain, yes. Okay, they're beautiful trees, and I, I, I hope that we don't, um, obviously the one that's going to get cut, it's for, for, for like a real purpose, but I hope that the we can keep the and preserve the look that that street has, because it looks really nice with those big trees. So that's all I have to say to you and to the uh, developer. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Um, uh, President Pro Tem Davis? We lost my. Uh, okay. Well, I think I see. Can you hear me? Oh. Can you hear me? Uh, can I can hear, hear you, me? Mike. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with my computer. It's making some weird sound. Uh oh. So I'm like completely out of visual. Okay. Uh, um, but anyway, you <laughs> have me on. Uh, let me look at my other computer to see if I can get in that way. And apparently, I had a problem doing that too. But I have another one that I'm trying to get in on that one now. Okay, let me uh, we'll check in with Commissioner Colosa um, uh, and give you a little time to check out your check out that other computer. Okay, gotcha. Commissioner Colosa, any questions or concerns on the side? Uh, thank you, President Good. Uh, thanks for your presentation, Mr. Benuelos. Um, just. Curious. I know um, this is a tree removal item before us, but in, in terms of the actual um, development um, itself, I'm just curious, does any of it have any affordable housing, do you know? And I know the applicant is here. Um, I'll defer to the applicant to respond to that one, that question. Hi, Mr. Specter. Go ahead, Mr. Specter. Ben, are you there? Good. 
Yeah, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, ben Spector from the Oni Group. Uh, thanks for having us, Hector. Uh, really appreciate the detailed report. Um, for this project, we do not have affordable housing. Uh, we have a few projects downtown that are incorporating affordable housing. This one was uh, grandfathered in before JJJ, um, and we built basically by right on this one, or we're entitled by right. Um, so there's no affordable housing on this. However, we did pay, or we are paying a $14.5 million public benefits fee, um, which a portion will go to affordable housing. Um, thank you for sharing that, Mr. Spector. It's a large development, so I just was curious. I know sometimes it's in the board report in terms of the, the types of use um, and whether or not there's, um, you know, any uh, affordable housing at all. So, but I appreciate you talking about the, the background and um, I'm a little disappointed, but I'm glad that there's going to be funds towards actual uh, affordable housing units um, in another project. Um, and uh, I'm just curious too, I know that there's only, um, the application ended up being for three tree removals. Um, in your research and, and before you, you put in that application, I'm just curious, was it always three or were, was there any saved in the process before um, you officially submitting this application? Uh, just three trees originally. Um, we we like the large pine trees on Hell Street as well, so we're we're excited to keep those. Um, and like Hector mentioned, the tree that does conflict with our driveway is actually, uh, you know, kind of growing sideways. I, I think at one point it was it was chopped, so it kind of works out well. And then on the site as a whole, um, up on our amenity deck, we actually are including close to 180 trees. So it's quite a bit of open space. Uh, I think it's 86,000 square feet of open space total. Okay, um, thank you for sharing that. You, you answered my next question was whether or not there was um, further trees planted on your on the actual private site. Um, I don't think I have any more questions uh, for this item, uh, but appreciate the additional information from, from you. Thank you, Mr. Good. Thanks, Commissioner Closeup. Um, Dr. Davis, are you uh, uh, able to uh, chime in with any questions or, or, or concerns? Dr. Davis, that would be star six to unmute your microphone. Yeah, I'm still working on this computer stuff. It must be a problem, a power mm -hmm. outage. Mm -hmm. However, in terms of the item, I have no questions on this particular one. All right. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Um, let us know if we can be helpful in any way on what you're doing. All right. Um, all right. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Ben Wallace. Um, appreciate the report. Also, I will, it is completely out of the purview of this item, but I would share Commissioner Close's disappointment in the absence of any affordable units out of 700 uh, units um, uh, in the middle of downtown, but that is not before us today though I President yeah. good can I add my disappointment to that as well it was disappointing disappointing to hear that out of 700 a 60 story unit in the middle of downtown we will not have any affordable housing I know we're not we're not in charge of that but expressing that as well agreed yes your your disappointment uh, is fully registered uh, um, on top of mine and Commissioner Clemson's, and I suspect Commissioner Davis's. Um, all right, um, that being said, uh, I do have a motion to approve uh, the item. <clears throat> approve. Aye. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Do I have a second? We'll reluctantly second this. A second. Was that again, Commissioner Clemson? Yes, I said I will reluctantly second this. Okay. Um, seconded by Commissioner Colosa. Um, any objections, um, concerns registered, but objections, uh, Vice President Garcia? No objections on what we're approving, but objections on the total project, yes. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So hearing no objections on the item before us. Uh, Did they talk about, um, Mr. President, point of clarification, 
did they mention to the board members any uh, moving forward, any measure that will ask the question about the potential set-aside projects that prime contractors might be interested in in terms of future projects? Did they give us any feedback on that regard? And I apologize for my technolo you know, technological problems here. No, no problems. Uh, uh, 2021, we all uh, we all got to deal with deal with it. So don't worry at all on that front, uh, Mike. Um, I, I, but can you clarify? I'm not totally sure, uh, and it may be my limitations. But um, sure, your question. My question is: Did the bureau talk to the board about moving forward, what they can do to have a discussion about the potential set aside? that is desired in the vision of the board as we talk about these projects downtown. Uh, is there going to be some conversation that we can have? It shouldn't be illegal to have a conversation about it. So I'll just jump in here. No, that is not part of the discussion here. Uh, that may be a pretty interesting discussion over in the planning department. But I this think. is, uh, I mean, you're, you're, we're way outside you know, what the board's role here is in the development process. It's fine to express disappointment. Uh, we can all have that, but okay. those all issues right. are not issues that the board has authority over. Got it. Thank you. Your, your instincts uh, are appreciated, uh, Mike, for sure. Um, but yeah, and that's also not something though that, that, that the Bureau would, would take on in, in any way. Um, uh, as well, so but 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 your I will take that as the registration of your disappointment as well. Right. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, with that, hearing no objections to the item in front of us, though um, uh, the uh, any objections, Mike? I think I didn't. Uh, none. None for me. No objections. Because yeah, no, yeah, you because you motion. Yeah, I've got a motion for my second of uh, Commissioner Closa. And um, the item is adopted forthwith. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you very much, Mr. Benuelos. Um, thank you, Mr. Spector. I assume uh, uh, the message is received. Um, all right. So with that, uh, colleagues, let's move on to item number three. Item number three uh, is uh, for a project in CD15. Um, this is landscape maintenance agreement 26900 Southwestern Avenue, California Department of Transportation, recommending the board authorize the president or two members of the board to execute the landscape maintenance agreement for 26900 Southwestern Avenue with the California Department of Transportation. Subject to the conditions listed in the associated report, this was continued. This item was originally scheduled on Friday, March 26th, and was continued to today. Is uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mokelbust with us today on this item? Yes, good morning. This is Bert Mokelbust. Hi, Bert. Good morning. How are you? Good. So, uh, uh, very briefly, good morning. Bert Mokelbust with the Bureau of Engineering Permit Case Management Division. Ask in front of you is that the board uh, authorize either the president or two members to execute this uh, landscape maintenance agreement between the city and Caltrans um, to uh, maintain uh, trees at 26900 Southwestern Avenue uh, based upon the condition that the property owner record his executed covenant agreement which basically um, is for the uh, landscape encroachment irrigation system at no cost to the city. A okay. little background on this particular scenario. The property owner, SFI Bridgeview LLC, uh, applied for a permit with Caltrans to plant uh, 39 crepe myrtle trees plus landscaping plus irrigation in uh, a Southwestern Avenue, which is Caltrans right away. Caltrans has a requirement that any um, improvements in their right of way landscaping has to have a maintenance agreement between the government entity, in this case, the city, and them. They will not have an agreement between them and the private property owner. So as part of the process, 
we had the property owner execute a covenant agreement with the Bureau of Engineering that they will be responsible for the maintenance of all this, the landscaping, the trees, and the irrigation at no cost to the city. This was, uh, we uh, consulted the city attorney and he was in, uh, uh, agreed that this would be the best, uh, an acceptable mechanism to go forward. So we're basically asking that uh, um, you execute uh, this uh, landscape maintenance agreement once we record the, uh, the covenant agreement. Any questions? <laughs> If I could just interject, uh, yeah. the real heart of this matter is Caltrans refuses to give a revocable permit. Plain and simple. They'll Without. only do that with they'll only do that with the city, and we have no interest in <laughs> taking on all the liability that, that comes with this stuff. But Caltrans will only essentially contract with the city, not the private developer, who's sort of the real party in interest here. But, you know, there is a benefit to uh, landscaping, beautification, trees, uh, green space, all of that. We recognize that. So what we do is we have this landscape maintenance agreement between the Caltrans and the city. And then we turn around and essentially pass all of that responsibility and liability potential to the private developer. Because we, we're only in the middle here because Caltrans refuses to do it any other way. If Caltrans simply allowed a direct, uh, essentially revocable permit with a private developer, just like we do, then we would not be involved here. Got it. But we, we've looked at this more closely with the Bureau of Engineering, and we recognize there's, you know, there's, there's value to the public here for having these improvements be done. Developers are willing to do it, and so we just uh, set this up to essentially be the go-between between Caltrans and the community. So this, got thank you, Ted, and thank you, Bert. So so this this is the agreement, uh, this is the agreement between us and um, SI, SFI Bridgeview. Uh, no, this is the agreement between us and Caltrans. Oh, so right, this is the, the, the land. Right. Agreement between us and Caltrans, we require an agreement between us, the covenant agreement, and Bridgeview. So this is predicate to the agreement with BOE and 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 SF, SFI Bridgeview. Okay. It's just part of the overall thing. I don't know if I would characterize it. I mean, we would not enter into this agreement with Caltrans unless we had already reached a written understanding with the private developer. Because yes, by entering into this agreement, we now take on all of the responsibility and liability as it as between Caltrans and City, it's all us. That agreement with the agreement with Bridgeview is is already memorialized. The uh, agreement with Bridgeview is already executed. We have not recorded it until we've got authorization to go forward. Once we have authorization to go forward, we will ask them to record that executed covenant agreement, and then we will uh, ask uh, the uh, landscape maintenance agreement to be executed. By the board. Okay. We have a few of these uh, kind of in the hopper, uh, and as we as we get through these, we really are trying to sort of perfect the best way of doing it. In some instances, the plantings that are to be done in the public right of, in the in the Caltrans public right uh, were actually maybe things that were required as part of the project approval or CEQA or otherwise. <clears throat> and then the, the developer in those situations is left with complete inability to comply with either CEQA or project requirements, trees, because Caltrans won't let them. Caltrans will only enter into these agreements with the city. So we, in those cases, work with the developers much as we are here. In this case, it was the, I think it was the developer that approach Caltrans, not because they're trying to fulfill some requirement that the city imposed, but I think because they just thought it would make the area look a lot better. Probably will. This is a median, isn't it? Uh, no, it's actually along the sidewalk. Oh, okay. Okay. 
All right. I, I think uh, the median issue, uh, and I don't want to take us too far down, things that are not before the board, but let me just say, if, if there was something on a, on a median where people have to cross traffic lanes, we'd look at that as, you know, in a lot different way. Right. Right. Got it. Okay. Um, Vice President Garcia, why don't we start with you? Any questions? I don't have any questions at this time. Thank you. All right. Um, President Pro Tem Davis. Uh oh. Is your audio working, Mike? Dr. Davis, star six would be to unmute your microphone. No, yes, no questions for me on this item. Okie doke. All right. Um, Commissioner Colosa. Um, thank you, President, for that. Uh, Mr. Uh, local bus briefed me on this, and I agree it's not ideal to have, uh, you know, MOU and essentially a maintenance agreement is kind of a pass through agency here, for lack of a better word. But um, I think we just want to see these moving happening and, and um, ultimately not acting on this would be, you know, the, would it be to the benefit of the community. So it's, it's not ideal, but uh, hopefully there will be a, a longer term conversation with Caltrans hopefully about um, doing direct, to, direct, direct maintenance agreements with these companies instead of going through the city. But uh, I know Mr. Mokobus, Mr. Mokobus is uh, handling that, uh, I'm sure, uh, with Caltrans, so I'm, I'm hopeful. Thank you. Thanks, Commissioner Closer. That makes uh, a lot of sense, and I would agree. Uh, certainly, ongoing conversations should probably happen. Um, that said, uh, we don't want to lose this uh, amenity for that community um, based on uh, bureaucracy, for lack of a better way to put it. So, um, or lack thereof. Uh, okay, so um, do I have a motion to approve the item? I'll take Commissioner Colosa's motion and a second by Vice President Garcia. Any concerns, uh, uh, President Pro Tem Davis? Uh, no, no concerns for me. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, we didn't get to ask. Oh my goodness! Wait. Uh, wait. Someone has a motion, but I can motion. <laughs> wait. What did I do? Oh, did you? I, I was just pointing out that I don't think Commissioner Davis questions yet. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, okay. Yeah, Commissioner Davis, did you have questions? No, I did not. Okay. Um, all right. So, so I've I've covered all bases. Yes. <laughs> I'll, ha I'll happily move. Okay. Okay, that's why you were holding. I got it. Thanks, Jessica. Um, all right, so I got a motion from Commissioner Closa, a second from Vice President Garcia. Um, uh, no objections or concerns from um, any colleagues, and uh, uh, the item will adopt the item forthwith. Thank you, Mr. Mokobust. Um, appreciate it. Have a good weekend, okay? And Ted, thank you for your input. <clears throat> okay, and thank you, Jessica, for Commissioner Closa. All right, uh, let's go to item four, folks. Item four is amendment number two. Um, Myron or Miron Electric uh, Construction Corporation Specialized High Voltage Services recommending the board, one, approve and forward this report with transmittals to the mayor and the city council with the request that the Board of Public Works be authorized to execute amendment number two for a one-year extension to extend personal services contract uh, uh, with Myron Electric Construction Corporation for specialized high voltage services, uh, and two, authorize the president or two members of the board to execute the contract amendment upon approval uh, by the mayor and city council. Who's with us on this item? Hi, good morning. This is Gabriel Viado. Hi, Gabriel. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good. Why don't you um, proceed with this? Okay. Um, we are requesting authority to execute um, amendment number two of the personal services contract with Myron Electric Construction Corporation for specialized high voltage services. As you may or may not know, the original contract had expired on March 10, 2020. Mm -hmm. And this amendment 
would be to extend for one year as Myron can only commit to fiscal year 21-22. The services would cover our four water reclamation plants, modifications and modernizations of high voltage electrical equipment can only be performed by UL certified and LA SAND personnel lack, lack the personnel uh, training and experience to perform these maintenance constructions safely. The estimated cost for this amendment would be for $1 million. And I had also inquired to see if this contract qualified to be exempt for cost containment. And after uh, communicating with Dr. Campos, uh, he determined that we have met the blanket exemption approval criterion due to this being a construction and maintenance contract for wastewater that is funded by sewer construction and maintenance fund. I would agree with that. Um, is that uh, does that include your presentation? Yes. Thank you. Um, point of clarification before I open it up for colleagues. So this is amendment number. This is so amendment number two would be a one year extension, and that would be an extension. But then, then I when I look at the um, when I look at the, uh, in the report under proposed contract amendment number two, term and cost, says this amendment number two shall renew the term for an additional two years and four months to June 30, 2022. That's at the top or the bottom of page four under proposed contract amendment number two, term and cost. Page number four. Um, no, that is incorrect. This is for one year. Okay, so the report says two and four months. That's uh, that's that's incorrect. Um. Okay. So uh, does that create a problem, Doctor Campos, or if we just approve the recommendation for the one year extension? Although I'd like clarity also, because if if the item, if this contract expired on March 9th of last year, and we're only voting to extend for one year, that means we're voting to extend up till about a month ago. In fact, exactly a month ago, um, which does not cover um, the time between a month ago and June 30, 2022. President Good, Fernando Campos, Executive Officer, that is correct. We would definitely need clarity on uh, regarding the expiration date of this rule option or extension, the amendment number two that's before you. In addition to that, the approval from the mayor's office is solely for the cost containment, executive directive number three, uh, but that would still require this item to be to be sent to the city council for approval since because of the duration is exceeds the three year limit. So before sending this item to council, the clarity would be need, uh, would, would need to be made up so that we're very clear on what we're asking the city council to approve. Um, all right, uh, Gabriel, we, we need to, we need, we need clarity. I'm not sure what we're approving here. Um, so what I'd like to do is continue this, um, uh, next Friday. Um, and, um, let's clean this up. Okay. Okay. Um, any objections, colleagues? No, I support that motion as well. Uh, I don't think it's clear. And, uh, if possible, also next Friday, can we have a video presentation as well? Yeah, um, I apologize. I'm, I'm having technical difficulties uh, as I try to log on 10 minutes before. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. Again, 2021, but to uh, yeah, but it'd be great. Let's let's if you can um, um, anticipate uh, technical difficulties um, and. Uh, uh, it, what I think we've found is that in some cases it may be 
easier if you're to, at, at the building, but that's up to y'all. So in any event, let's continue this, um, Dr. Campos, to next Friday. Um, <clears throat> I think the agenda is already out for Wednesday. Um, Friday, April 16th. Yeah. Great, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Via, Via, am I saying? Via? Viado. Viado, thank you, sir. Um, thank we'll, you. See, we'll see you next Friday. Yeah, this is uh, this is Ted. Uh, so Gabriel, please uh, feel free to reach out to uh, you know Adina in, in our office. So if you can't get a hold of her, me, if you have any questions, I I'm not as familiar uh, with this item as uh, perhaps I should be. Uh, I, I suspect what's really going on here is this, the timing issue is confused because the, when the contract expired and when we're extending it to. Just let us know if there's anything we could do to this. I, I did not have okay. a chance to pull up the various transmittals, which probably provide the clarity that we're lacking right now. OK, I'll get clarification. Thank you. Okay, I appreciate that. And I, I, I do want the report to reflect the, the, the act, what, what we're actually you know, approving and voting on. So thank you for that. And thank you, Ted. And yeah, Adina, um, please please avail yourself of Adina Hoppenstein. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Um, okay, colleagues, that brings us to um, that brings us to Ruben Flamenco time. Um, item number five. Um, item number five uh, is, was continued from uh, Friday, March twelfth, two thousand twenty-one. This is a contract award to NBS <coughs> database software. Recommending the board approve and forward this report with transmittals to the mayor requesting that the president or two members of the Board of Public Works be authorized to execute and award this contract to NBS for a database software that will complete the calculation of updated street lighting maintenance assessments for over 550,000 parcels and make recommended changes to Proposition 218 related documents to position the Bureau to conduct a citywide mail-in ballot process. The total cost of the contract is $245,000 and two, to authorize the president or two commissioners to sign and execute the contract upon approval of the mayor's office. Work order uh, L0700003, um, and again, this was continued from Friday, March 12, 2021. I saw from the transmittals, we actually have the contract um, uh, attached here. Um, Mr. Flamenco, why don't you proceed with the presentation? Ruben Flamenco, Bureau of Street Lighting. We are requesting for the board to adopt our item number five and forward this report to the mayor's office requesting that the president or two commissioners of the board be authorized to execute and award this personal service contract to NBS for a database software that will contain the calculation of over 550,000 parcels and make recommended changes to Proposition 218 related documents, including our engineer's report, to better position the Bureau to conduct a future citywide mail-in ballot measure. The, co the total cost for this six-month contract is $245,000. It is important to note that the Bureau had estimated the cost of this contract to be approximately $350,000. Funding for this project is being paid from our Street Lighting Maintenance Assessment Fund. Before I begin, we have a modification regarding transmittal number three, uh, which is a copy of the proposed personal service contract with NBS. The language in Article D, titled Data Security and Privacy, Part 6, titled Data Breach, on page 12 of the proposed personal service contract with NBS, specifies that the contractor shall notify as soon as reasonably feasible, but in any event, within 24 hours, in writing and telephonically of a data breach or cybersecurity incident. NBS requested on April 6 to change the notification period for a data breach or cybersecurity incident from 24 hours to 72 hours. Yesterday, we be, the city attorney's office agreed to this change. Let me begin with some background. After the passage of Proposition 218 in 1996, the Los Angeles City Lighting District consisting of approximately 510,000 parcels at that time and providing approximately $40 million annually to the Street Lighting Maintenance Assessment Fund was and remains frozen. 
The Bureau has been able to operate despite the Bureau's main revenue source being frozen for 25 years by implementing cost saving measures such as our LED conversion program and high voltage conversion program and other cost saving measures as well. Ultimately, the Bureau has to create a new Los Angeles City Lighting District consisting of all 550,000 parcels via mail ballot via a mail-in ballot measure in compliance with Proposition 218 that will incorporate an inflation index and allow benefiting property owners the opportunity to decide if they want to improve the city's lighting services or allow for these services to decrease. On September 11, 2020, the board authorized the Bureau of Street Lighting to release a request for proposal for a detailed plan for a Proposition 218 assessment database software and related document preparations. The RFP will provide a detailed plan on initiating and processing ballot proceedings of approximately 550,000 parcels that will incorporate an inflation index into the Bureau's main revenue source, which is our existing street lighting maintenance assessment fund. The request for proposal was posted on the city's business assistance virtual network website on September 16, 2020. Specific questions concerning the RFP needed to be submitted to our Bureau by October 15, 2020. We did receive questions from three potential proposers and we immediately posted the questions and our responses on Babin. A mandatory pre-proposal virtual conference was conducted on October 20th, 2020. The mandatory virtual conference was attended by two potential proposers. We only received one proposal from NBS by the November 6, 2020 deadline. NBS submitted a proposal of the amount of $245,000. It is important to note the first year of licensing for the database software is included in the contract. Thereafter, the city has the option to continue licensing for subsequent years at a negotiable price. NBS was evaluated in accordance with the specifications of the RFP. An initial interview with NBS was conducted on December 17, 2020 and a follow-up interview with NBS was conducted on January 14, 2021. This contract requires NBS to revise and update our engineer's report and make recommendations. Furthermore, NBS will be required to calculate new assessment rates for approximately 550,000 parcels. Moreover, NBS will be required to recommend a new specialized ballot design where each ballot is individually identified with a quick response code or serial number and may be tabulated. NBS submitted a proposal that indicated a thorough working knowledge of assessment districts and experience with Proposition 218 and large ballot proceedings with municipalities throughout California and within Los Angeles County. NBS's proposal and interview were very comprehensive and well presented. NBS's database software is already being used by several public agencies to manage millions of parcels and nearly $1 billion in annual charges. NBS demonstrated their database software to our management team and information technology team during our follow-up interview on January 14, 2021. And we believe that NBS via this contract will better position the Bureau to conduct a future citywide mail-in ballot measure for approximately 550,000 parcels. The Bureau of Street Lighting is requesting for the board to adopt this item as amended and forward this report to the mayor and upon the mayor's approval that the president or two commissioners of the board execute this six month contract with NBS for $245,000. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Flamenco. Uh, all right, um, President Pro Tem Davis, any questions? Star six, Dr. Davis. Okay, no, no, no comments. Uh, no uh, inquiry from me at this time. All right, thank you, sir. Um, Commissioner Closa. Hi, thank you, President Good. Thank you for your presentation, Mr. Flamenco. Um, I know this is a big item for BSL. Um, it has a lot of implications. Um, and we're, I think, having a larger conversation right now nationally about infrastructure. So this is timely in terms of the investments that we need to make. And, and just wanted to have a, a few follow-up questions 
for you, I know that um, the operations of BSL um, rely pretty much solely on street lighting assessments. Is that right? Yes. Right. And how long have you had essentially been operating on the same budget for? Well, it, it, uh, the, the revenue that we generate from the LA City Lighting District has been frozen since 1996, since the passage of Proposition 218. And it's roughly about $40 million annually that we receive in uh, assessments from the LA City Lighting District. So since 1996, BSL has been operating on a $40 million budget. Yes, and that's why we've had to do some cost saving measures such as our LED uh, program and our high voltage conversion program and other cost saving measures as well in order to function and operate. I actually want to take a moment and, and recognize, um, you know, especially uh, the former general manager, Norma Izahakian, for um, you wouldn't have thought that she led a, a team in a bureau with only a $40 million budget, which um, is actually a, a very small slice of the pie considering how much innovation was coming out of that bureau and out of that team. And I know I'm sure Vice President Garcia will elaborate more on this about um, I, you, you, wouldn't have, you wouldn't have realized that your funds were, were frozen in place uh, with a $40 million cap um, given all the work that you all did. And so I think that this is timely given this larger conversation, like I mentioned, uh, on infrastructure, as we know, President Biden is is um, looking to invest more in this this type of infrastructure uh, nationally and locally. Um, I wanted to ask you a few more questions about the experience of NBS. Can you speak a little bit more about um, what other cities have utilized them or um, other agencies? I know you talked about their experience more broadly, but just curious what specifically they worked on that, that um, brought BSL to, to choose them. Sure. NBS has been a California-based firm for a quarter century, specializing in assessment districts and other land-based uh, special financing districts. NBS has participated on task forces and been asked to speak and write on Proposition 218. NBS has formed, balloted, and consulted on hundreds of assessment districts across California and within Los Angeles County, including the formation of a landscaping and lighting assessment for the city of Pomona, as well as the formation of a landscaping assessment district for Culver City. NBS has also prepared engineers report for various municipalities. Uh, NBS's database software is already being used by several public agencies to manage millions of parcels and nearly a billion dollars in annual charges. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and uh, can you also clarify, and I know this item, um, what's listed on the board report, it says this is, um, so I'm going to scroll up here, um, the amount is for $245,000, and I think I think that the correct amount is three fifty. dollars so is that an amendment that needs to happen, or? No, the, the uh, I stated for the record that the Bureau had estimated that the cost of this contract was going to be approximately 350000 This is when we were... It, uh, initiating the RFP, that was our estimate. But we got a we got NBS to submit a proposal for a, a lesser amount, which came out to be two hundred and forty five thousand. The amendment uh, has to do with the notification period for a data breach or cybersecurity incident, and uh, NBS wanted to change that uh, notification period from twenty four hours to seventy two hours. And the city attorney's office, as of yesterday, agreed to this change. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that 245 and the 350 number that I heard. So thank you for clarifying that. And I'm, I'm glad that um, ESL was able to negotiate a, a slightly cheaper price for, for this um, task. And um, just a last question for me is I know the turnaround time for this um, is quick. It's six, six months. months. Can, can you walk us through like... Um, uh, what happens after the six months is over? What should we expect to see? And, and how confident are we that um, and NBS is able to complete the assessment and do all this work within this short time frame? Well, certainly once the contract begins, and we're hoping that the contract commences in early May uh, and, and will expire towards the end of October. But we'll be working closely with NBS personnel, uh, introducing them to our current methodology, our land use uh, methodology and we will then be uh, making modifications to the engineers report or perhaps changing the zone rates changing the what we call equivalent dwelling units in order 
to calculate or how we intend to calculate the new 550,000 parcels. Their database software, when we, when I mentioned on January 21st, they demonstrated that to us, we had given them some of our files so that they can calculate just using our methodology uh, and our numbers. And they were able to produce that, you know, pretty much overnight and calculate it on their database and then produce a specialized ballot with a quick response code. So they have some experience in this category already. And I'm sure, again, it's going to just require a lot of careful coordination. And again, we're going to listen to the recommendations as far as what we should change in our engineer's report. And we're confident that once we have this database software, it better positions the Bureau for us to move forward with a citywide uh, mail-in ballot measure. Okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Flamenco. I appreciate you answering my questions. Um, I'm excited for this item um, and I know BSL has been very patient and has been doing a lot of work um, given the budget restraints so thank you and thank you commissioner no further questions for me thank you commissioner Closa. um vice president Garcia Thank you, President Good, and thank you, Commissioner Coloso, for those questions. That's exactly right. Uh, I'm very proud of BSL for functioning, um, even given the high demand in the past couple of years, you know, demand in work, demand in wages, um, prices of construction have gone up. I mean, everything, and yet, magically, they have been able to just round it up all the time. But it's come to a time that this can't keep going. And so I'm um, happy that we're finally here. <clears throat> Ruben, thank you for coming and uh, following this through. I know there's been constant conversation around this for years, and we're finally at this moment. So, yeah, you can you can celebrate after, <laughs> well, you know, a few more minutes, and then maybe celebrate after that. Um, and then make sure, you know, that you call on Miguel and everybody else for the celebration as well. <clears throat> because, um, you know, there's a lot of challenges that BSL goes through, um, and uh, sometimes it gets unnoticed. And you know, what what constituents just see is are the lights on or off. But there's so much work behind the scenes to that. Um, even us tackling the copper wire theft that has increased by almost 300 percent in the past couple years. Not 100, but 300 percent copper wire theft and so we're we're trying to find ways on mitigating that issue and we, you know we you know we've developed a task force and we're trying to work around that situation but BSO has really worked really hard to make sure that we still do de uh, deploy services uh, deliver on time and make sure that we have uh, what it takes to provide city services so very proud of BSO on this and with that, I move this item because I feel like it's time that we get our BSL on the road with this. And thank you to, oh, I'm going to mess up the acronyms right now because I don't have it in front of me. MBS? Yes. Okay, good. MBS uh, on um, providing one such a quick turnaround uh, on this very specialized type of work that they're going to do. And second, also with working with BSL and being such a partner with BSL on this. So thank you to MBS for that as well. And with that, I move this item. I second that motion, Mr. President. Okay, if y'all, y'all, your enthusiasm is, is amazing. I would like to ask a couple of questions myself. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you had any ask questions. Okay. Go ahead, okay. good okay. president. Ask all your questions. It's really, it's really more um, a process question. Um, so, again, city attorney is, is comfortable with the extension of that notification period on any sort of breach of privacy from 24 to 72 hours, Ted? Yes. Okay. And then um, is it difficult or problematic to amend because that would need to be part of the, the motion, uh, Vice President Garcia, um, to, to amend the contract um, uh, with its approval or, or do we need to like have the contract come back as, a, as amended? I think we can address that here right now. Okay. All right. So um, would you like to amend your motion, Vice President Garcia? Yes. Uh, Fernand, Dr. Campos, can you help me with the language? Because, <clears throat> Yeah, absolutely. Give me one second. So the motion would be to approve the report as 
amended to revise Article D, paragraph part six on page 12 of transmittal number three, the proposed contract, to change the notification period from 24 hours to 72 hours in the second sentence. Okay. So I didn't capture all those Article 2, page 12. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was trying, uh, but can as amended as amended with Dr. Campos's amended language. Would that be proper to say? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. So I move with the amendment proposition that Dr. Campos just stated. Right. And anyway, we've got your second, President Pro Tem Davis. You just mute yourself, Dr. Davis. One more time, star six. Yes, sir. Right. All right. And then uh, any concerns or objections, Commissioner Closa? All right. Hearing no objections, um, uh, the item as amended uh, is adopted forthwith. Congratulations, Mr. Flamenco. Thank you, Vice hey, President. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All Thank right. you. This, you know, by the way, this is just a next step. <laughs> you gotta process that. Sure. <laughs> but, but it's a, a big one. It's but a, a big step. one. It yeah. is. It's and an important step. one. And, and, and one you've had to work on. You've worked on for a while. So congratulations. Thank you all very much. Um, all right. Um, that brings us to our, uh, uh, brings us to item number six. Um, uh, item number six today is uh, qualified based temporary homeless housing contractors list Bernard's recommending the board authorize the city engineer to add Bernard's to the short list of pre -qual or qualified, ba qualified based temporary homeless housing contractors. This motion uh, will be presented uh, to us, I believe, by no less uh, uh, than uh, Mahmoud Karimzada uh, in his I think potentially last appearance um, before us. Uh, so, uh, um, and I know Marina is here. Um, uh, she's the brain and the brawn of that joint anyway. So um, we'll be in good hands. But uh, um, y'all proceed and uh, 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 tell us about this. Good morning, President Good. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, President Good. Yes. Um, the motion before you uh, has been uh, in the past uh, several months uh, coming to you for adding additional construction contractor firms uh, to the pre-qualified list for homeless housing. Uh, we came to you at the beginning, uh, it happened in last year uh, in July, at the end of July, that uh, we initially you approved the uh, list uh, to be started with uh, three uh, qualified contractors. Uh, after that, uh, we received additional requests from contractors to join in. And in October, twice, and in the uh, last February, we came before you and added uh, firms to the list. Last time in February, we added uh, Clark Construction and CS Legacy uh, to the pre-qualified list or qualified based list uh, for homeless housing. And uh, this time uh, is Bernard's. Uh, Bernard uh, is a construction firm who approached us and uh, we, as uh, we did in the past, uh, we are open to any contractor firm who is approaching us in order to join this effort. Uh, the reason we don't uh, approach anybody because we don't want to trigger an RFQ. Um, so uh, Bernard's approached us, we uh, distributed our questionnaires and uh, they respond to the questionnaires. We have a panel of uh, four people, including uh, Bureau of Contract Administrators, administrations, uh, and uh, they rated the value, give you the value and rated the Bernard's uh, questionnaires and responses, and they deemed them qualified. And uh, hopefully, if you approve it today, uh, they will be going to participate with the new uh, next project that hopefully going out to bed uh, next Monday. Uh, it might be a little, a few days delay for that, but uh, for now, our aim is to go out uh, next Monday for the new project, include, uh, include the uh, Bernard's construction contractors as well. And 
the other things that as usual is even though the council and the board uh, approved us to pick one contractor to go for pricing but they have decided in, uh, after the initial start to go to the entire list to get a price for our projects so that concludes my presentation i'd be glad to answer any questions Thank you, Mahmoud. Appreciate that very much. Um, uh, let's uh, let's open this up. Um, Vice President Garcia, any questions or comments? Uh, no, thank you, President Good. I don't have any questions or comments. Mahmoud briefed me uh, on the situation, and I understand the community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Um, President Pro Tem Davis? Uh, no questions for me on this item. Okay. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Um, and then Commissioner Colosa. Hi, thank you, President Good, for Mr. Good's presentation. I have questions, but just want to take a moment to I, we recognize your body in the larger uh, retirement board ceremony, but wanted to take this opportunity to thank you again for your service to the city and how special it's been to work with you on um, producing more housing. Um, in the city of Los Angeles and you know you pour your heart and soul into this work and and what this item before us is really going to be part of the legacy that you leave which is a really important one the the difference that you've made in people's lives because you've really helped build the infrastructure internally for how we can do um, this more successfully you know you you um, built a relationship um, with our contracting community to see that it's possible to build this housing successfully within six months um, with limitations and you have navigated um, all sorts of problems both internally and externally um, and have done it uh, with a smile on your face the entire time and so you have uh, led uh, with love with your project and I've seen how you've also mentored uh, so many people in BOE to take over this work and that's why we're able to to continue this, um, continue your legacy, uh, because you, you've done so much. And so I hope you feel so proud uh, with everything that you've accomplished. And I, I'm so sad that this is going to be the last time that we're seeing you at board. But I know don't be a stranger. Uh, please come to to many more city events after this. But I just wanted to, to say that and, and thank you again for, for all your service and for, for making the city a better place. So thank you, Mr. Kern, today. Thank you, Commissioner Keloza. I appreciate all the comments you made. Uh, if uh, President Good, give me a minute after you uh, review the, 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 the items uh, and allow me to speak for a minute. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I be, would be disappointed if not. I would just um, say, I mean, the, A, this item um, shouldn't be lost. Yet another example of quality work. I mean, when we first uh, um, approved this list, um, there was a dearth um, of folks that responded, quite frankly. Um, and um, uh, you assured us, among others, that um, we would likely see that change, um, that we would see others come on board as the work was demystified. Um, and sure enough, here we are getting ready to approve a seventh um, uh, vendor um, on this list, um, a, a small but not insignificant um, uh, uh, further example um, of the excellence of your work and of the um, uh, the, the the depth of your understanding um, of the market and the work um, as well. And so, uh, Mahmoud, uh, we love you. You know that um, you will be missed. Um, there is something called the way of the peaceful warrior, um, and I would say that you follow that path. Um, and uh, uh, it, is, it is impressive to watch. Um, it is rare at someone's departure that um, we can feel equally peaceful um, and frankly comfortable, except that, um, uh, simply put, um, you have further groomed another peaceful warrior um, who truly does uh, approach the work in such an incredibly similar way and that's with marina and so um uh you go work on your house mahmoud um and we're gonna work <laughs> with, we're gonna work with marina and we're gonna get things done okay and when you when you when you when you want to take a break and come um sit in with us 
um, don't hesitate. Particularly, by the way, when things get back to normal, we're, we're in person and we can uh, 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 give you some hugs and take some pictures. So um, with that, um, uh, let's go ahead and deal with the, with the, uh, the item and then Mahmoud will give you a little time here. Um, do I have a motion? And in fact, I'm gonna invite a motion from Commissioner Colosa um, to approve the item. I would happily move this item. Great. Do I have a second? A second. Thank you, Vice President Garcia. Dr. Davis, um, I'm almost ready to presume no questions or concerns, but do you have any questions or concerns? You are correct. <laughs> no questions or concerns. Thank you, brother. Um, all right, with that and no, no objections, um, uh, the item is adopted uh, forthwith. Um, thank you, Mahmoud and Marina. Uh, Mahmoud, would you like, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, President Good. I just want to thank you, uh, each one of you, uh, for the last, uh, some of you for longer, some of shorter, uh, for the last seven, eight years. And uh, it's been an amazing experience. I've been coming to the board and presenting uh, for most of my career with the city, almost 30 years. Uh, of course, at the lower position, you follow you know, your mentors and you try to learn and observe. Then later, uh, you take the items by uh, yourself and then coming in. And then after that, uh, when I was uh, at the division uh, head position, I was trying to groom people in order to come to the board themselves and present their items. So it has been a long journey, and uh, every minute of it was a joy and uh, had amazing satisfy satisfying feeling for me because uh, something would have get done. I just want to tell you in the last 30 years that I've been with the city, I have never seen a board like yours uh, as great as you all are uh, supporting uh, uh, the staff on every issue, providing a huge guidance and direction as we move on with our projects and construction, in construction or in design, providing us with much needed uh, clarity that we need to continue our work, and also always had our back. We never felt we are alone in this. We never felt that we have to think twice and always uh, followed the road with very uh, a lot of confidence that gave us the power and energy uh, to finish our work. I want to appreciate your friendship because I felt so many times when I've been led by you uh, it been with kindness, it been, been with, with uh, a sense of friendship, and uh, that uh, I cherish that. I take that with my uh, left of my, you know, uh, uh, professional life if it's living some after the city. And um, it's just uh, don't never forget uh, all the work that I've done with you. I want to appreciate and thank you all. Commissioner Caloza, thank you so much. When you came as the Bureau of Engineering uh, Commissioner, uh, it's been great, great uh, experience for me. Um, thank you for all the guidance, all the uh, kindness, and uh, all the support. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Davis, uh, I appreciate all the advice the, during the years that you've been pushing me to make sure that I do job, my job better, and uh, I really certainly appreciate that. And uh, Commissioner Garcia, you've always been kind to me. You always provided support from day one that you joined the board, and I, I can't thank you enough. I thank you, I can't thank you enough, and uh, you're also always a smiling when providing comment to us, and I really appreciate that. Uh, President Good, uh, you, I know you from since the day one you came to the city. Uh, I remember uh, when Gary w was at the harbor, you came to our bureau for the Day one, I was there with Deborah, and we met and went over the Bureau of Engineering items. And I liked it right there. I, I thought you're very genuine, very uh, supportive, and you want to make some difference. And I wanted to join you. And since then, it has been a great experience. I appreciate every uh, support and every guidance that you have provided me throughout the years. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I. Uh, I wish that the, the pandemic is over sooner and I can meet you in person and 
also hug you and thank you in person. Thank you. Lamoud closes it like he opens it, um, with grace, with generosity, um, with kindness, um, and uh, and always on point. Uh, doesn't miss a beat. Thank you, Mahmoud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck with the house. Thank you. I need it. <laughs> and Marina, buckle up. <laughs> Thank you, Mahmoud. I would also, Mr. Yeah. President, like to say congratulations to Mahmoud as well. He has done, I think, a very great job in terms of creating change in the Bureau of uh, Engineering. He was in a very critical and pivotal position in terms of being in, contract, in contact with, with uh, prime contractors. And uh, he had some very significant projects. <laughs> Uh, in the city of Los Angeles, and it was very rewarding to communicate with him uh, in the work that he did and the training that he oversaw in terms of the contractors getting information. And, of course, always I'm always looking at how we can be more inclusive. And so we were able to push the envelope to the degree that we helped to increase information to prime contractors and, again, he created change that matters and made a difference in the landscape of inclusion and diversity in contracting. We've got a long way to go, but we have certainly come a long way under his leadership. I think in summary, you can look back on the work that you have done with pride because you were at the right place at the right time to begin this process for change. And as you leave, we have already enjoyed the implementation of the mayor's executive order 27 in the midst of all of the other competing public policies. It is rewarding to know that the city of Los Angeles has distinguished itself in terms of the direction it wants to go, despite what's around us. And so when we look at the both ethical and moral decisions, if you will, that were made, uh, my move, you were willing to help guide us in the right direction. And when I look back on your public service, again, it is one in which you should be thoroughly proud of. And you always had an open uh, ear to uh, public uh, works commissioners. Uh, and so that is greatly appreciated, and I wish you the very best. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. So agreed. Mahmoud reminded me the other day of, of, of uh, one of our first things, and it, it so exemplifies um, how it worked. I mean, asphalt plant number two, which I don't know, Mahmoud, it was like three decades in the making, and then oh boom, yeah, and, and 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 a much more complex project than folks realized. And I remember, like year one when I was here, we worked on that together. And, Mahmoud and Reza would show up in my office and be like, "Listen, this is we, we, we need some things." And uh, and and uh, but you you got it done, and you always got the job done. And so uh, uh, that is that's the that's the ultimate um, barometer. And um, uh, we truly have been the peaceful warrior. Thank you, Mahmoud, very much. Thank you, thank you. Okay, Marina, um, thank you very much, and we'll see you very soon. Um, and. Uh, the item is moved. Thank y'all. Um, yes. All right. With that, um, Mr. Maxwell has been waiting uh, uh, very patiently. Good morning, Orlando. Good morning, President. Good commissioners, bureau representatives, and Dr. Campos. So the item for us, status update on major upcoming street improvement projects, and yes, uh, the floor is yours, Orlando. Thank you. I am Orlando Maxwell, superintendent with the Streets Renewal Division of Streets LA. This information is being provided to keep the public informed on the upcoming resurfacing projects and to minimize the impact on the community as well as delays. For additional information or concerns, you can contact our coordinating section in Streets Renewal at area code 213-847-3200. The weekend, Saturday, April 10th through Sunday, April 11th, uh, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., we will cold mill and pave Main Street from Slauson Ave to Manchester Ave and Council District 9, the Zabata King Neighborhood Council, funded by our comp 
Complete Streets program. Uh, on Sunday, April 11th, from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., we will pave Main Street from Vernon Avenue to Slauson Avenue in Council District 9, the Zapata King Neighborhood Council, funded by our Complete Streets program. Additionally, during the week of April 11th through April 17th, we have scheduled to complete in the Valley and Metro regions 19 projects for a total of 27.85 lane miles. The press releases were distributed and notifications have been issued. Streets LA has coordinated with the council offices to assist with outreach to stakeholders. We have coordinated with the Los Angeles Department of Transportation for traffic control assistance. The information is also available on our Streets LA website using a resurfacing projects icon. This concludes my presentation. Thank you, Orlando. Um, any questions, colleagues? That was very thorough. Thank you. Um, President Pro Tem Davis? No, no, no uh, um, comments from me other than great report. Thank, Thank you. you. Thorough. Vice President Garcia? Thanks, Mike. Same. No questions from me. Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you, Ada. And Commissioner Colosso. Uh, thank you, President Good. Uh, no questions for me. I thought you did a great job as always. Mr. Maxwell, have a nice weekend. Thank you, and you have a great weekend too. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Maxwell. And is the NFL draft this weekend? No, it's not. <laughs> okay, I know I know who you'll be uh who you'll be looking for as well with me. Oh, definitely. Um, all right, thanks. I just got something about it from the NFL fanatics. I was wondering if you were paying attention. All right, um, thank you uh for the report, Orlando. Have a good weekend, okay? You too. Have a great weekend. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Dutch Campos, that clear the decks? <clears throat> yes, it does. All right. Um Thank you, everybody. This meeting is officially adjourned. Uh, uh, colleagues, um, we'll reconvene at 12.03, 10 minutes from now, okay, for a management meeting. All right. Thanks, everybody. Meeting adjourned.